All right, everyone. No going back now. I'm stuck lighting this thing. I cut out the um, display, the speedometer display. It's right there. Time to go get some plastic card and cut it. And mount up the um, decal. And then I'm not replacing it until I'm done painting this. And i got to build a light box for that LED that goes behind there. There isn't a lot of room, so i got to keep that in mind, too. So this is going to be a fun one. That light box is probably going to be out of aluminum foil tape, and I'm probably not going to mess around with it too much. Either that or it's going to be out of black construction paper, one of the two. Okay? And I'm going to have two LEDs. I'm going to have a secondary one behind this cluster. Now that i got this piece off, time to get the drill bits which are in here. These are so tiny, I'm going to use a pin vise on them. I can't use the Tamiya Handy drill. They're far too tiny. I've got a collet that'll use those really tiny little drill bits on the Handy drill, but I just want to be precise and take my time. So I'll be back in a little bit. I don't know if you can see it outside that window, but we're having one of our, yeah, you can see it there, spring rainstorms. No painting today. It's far too humid. Even inside with air conditioner, we're probably running a good 60-70% humidity in the house. No, that's too high. It's probably about 30 or 40%. Outside, it's 100%. I could probably get away with running the airbrush, but there's no running a rattle can, so I can't primer anything. I do have some primer in here. I should try. Where is it? There it is. Is that primer? No, that's aqua gloss clear. This is primer. That's a mall clad primer. Maybe I should try that. See how this stuff works. You know? On a contest build, I'm trying some primer. Mm. I got plenty to do without having to paint, so I'm just going to work on the interior of the Honda some more. I've got some decal work to do. I can. I got to spray some future on that engine to seal it up a little bit. I don't really want to spray future. I need to because I gotta put some decals. What I could try, I need to try this stuff. This primer here. I really need to try this primer. Okay. And see how good the Alkalide primer is and microfiller. Alright. What I can do, however, is get this stuff out. That's clear coat, semi matte. Get out the semi mat, the Alkalide clear coat, spray that engine down. It has a decal that goes on it, and get that decal on there. Um, and I can do some soldering. I got two hours. So I'm going to start soldering up LEDs for this Honda. That's what I'm going to do. Get it done. So I'll be back in a little bit. Time to drill and solder. All right. Talk to you later. Hello everyone, I'm about to start working on the Honda and doing some LEDs and I took a moment to clean my work surface up because there was stuff everywhere and it was going to be kind of a mess to deal with. Got my bucket of LEDs and wire, everything's in here but the magnet wire and a few assorted LEDs, they're in another big bucket I've got that has them all sorted by color and size. And I forgot that I had bought a thing from Modeler's brand, a 10 millimeter pack of LEDs. I'm not using the 10 millimeters on these. They're way too big. This is a Honda. It's small. And I'm going to use the SMDs. Um, these are surface mount. They're tiny. I know the voltage on all of them. It's the same voltage as normal colors. Consume the same amount of power too. Okay, all 20 milliamp hour LEDs. I got my LEDs in hand. Up next, I got to decide on voltage. That I have an experiment running, and I need to see how the outcome of that experiment before I decide on voltage. So, what I'm going to do is stop this. Next video you're going to see is the circuit I was playing with. Um. I'm going to bring it out and reevaluate it real quick and we'll see if I can get it to do what I want. If I can get it to do what I want, I'm going to use it. If I can't, I won't. So there you go. 
So let me get going on this. Let me get out my the rest of my surface mount LEDs. Those are magnetic reed switches not used on this one. Okay, and I got to use these surface mount LEDs. There's just not room for anything else in there. There just isn't. So I'll get the circuit out. I got to get the breadboard out. We're going to take a look and see what we can do. Back in a bit. All right, everyone. What you are looking at is a blinker circuit. This blinker circuit is not driven by an IC chip. It's driven by two transistors. They're right here and here. Okay? The blink rate is controlled by these capacitors and the capacitor resistance combination because these capacitors hook up to one end of the I, the transistor and the other end of the capacitor goes to a resistor. So the discharge rate of the capacitor is what causes the blinking. It causes a, this is like a solid state switch and it's switching back and forth depending on the voltage applied by uh, this capacitor. Okay, so the capacitor drives the switching. Um, I don't like this circuit. I'm going to stick to my timing chips. Timing chips are simpler in a lot of ways because I can't change the resistance too much without frying the uh, transistors. It, 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 it's stable like it is. You can't change values too much without destroying it. I'm going to put those videos on here. They're horrible because... I didn't have much time that day and I hadn't had much sleep, so I'm kind of cranky in them. But I'll go ahead and put the videos up. Just warning you, they're not the best videos I've done. But, um, if I haven't deleted them. But, um, I'm going to see if I can modify the circuit. I want to see if I can drive the behavior in a specific way. Instead of using this capacitor resistor combination to drive the blinking, Let's see if I can use an output pin from a 4060 to drive the blinking, or maybe something else. So I'm going to see how that works. The only thing is, is I'm not sure the threshold voltage that will do this, and if the main driver I want to use will work the way I want it to. But we're going to find out in a minute. So to keep this video from being too long, I'm going to stop here. You guys can see the videos. Actually, I'm going to upload it yeah you guys can see those videos there and I'm going to get prepared and I'm gonna try this a different way and we'll see what happens I'll be back in a bit and right, everyone we're gonna talk about the base for the Honda what I have here is a clock alright this clock never kept time pretty clock doesn't keep time very well so I decided I was gonna tear it apart I've already torn the clock part away from the wooden ring this wooden ring is gonna make a nice base now it's got a lip on the underside so I can use this as either a template, template to cut my own base or as the real base. But now let's get the Honda out so we can see exactly how this is going to fit. Okay, now the Honda is still in its box. I just painted it yesterday. I, I'm going to leave it in here until it cures up fairly well because I don't want dust attacking it while it's curing and here it is we can see it's got nice paint on it and here's the wooden base and it's going to sit in there just perfect this wooden ring is almost the exact diameter I need to put the Honda in there perfectly okay and I think that's just going to work beautifully I know I can't really I gotta be careful how I hold this thing right now because the paint's still curing and I don't want smudging or fingerprints it was lacquer paint you guys can see, so it's probably fairly cured right now. So you guys can see it. It's going to be the perfect size for this car. All right. So I'll come back with the base when I'm a little bit better prepared for it. In other words, when I've actually got the clock removed and I can see exactly how that's going to sit in there. All right. How did the remote get on the floor? Hope you enjoyed. All right, YouTube. We're here to talk for a minute. Um, here was my plan for the car. I was going to put speakers in it so you could plug your phone into it and hear music through the speakers in the car, just like a real car. Ran into a problem. I went to the dollar store, got some headphones. Okay? I already hacked this headphones apart. I want to see how big that speaker is. That speaker's huge. Okay? In 124 scale, that thing is going to be like this and it don't even fit like this 
not going to fit in the rear deck of the window. It's possible to cut that speaker down with some tin snips. It really is lots and lots of work. All right. Here's the main problem, though. I'm going to play a sound I know I won't get in trouble on YouTube for. Tell me if you hear it. Okay, I go to play it and everything what's working. Isn't this fun? It says error 123, unknown error. Let's pull that out. Let's play it with the phone speakers. Oh, how do we get on Lion Roar? That's not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. So I know that's working that way. Let's try it this way. You know, here we go, playing it again. You would barely be able to hear it. Okay? So this is out of the question. That, that's not worth it to play that, okay? You, you, that's not even worth playing on my car. I mean, put it in there and go through all the trouble of putting it in there. Let's try something with some... Anyone hear it? Yeah, with the closed windows on the car, that's just not going to work. So what I'm going to do is try something different. I'm going to hack these wires apart. I've got a use for it. So let's see if I can make it work. I'll show you in a minute. All right, everyone. After much trial and work, I finally got it kind of working. Not very bright with the green. Um, I think what I need to do is lower that resistance right there, and that'll brighten it up some. We're going to find out. But, the truth of the matter is, it's working. Here's one way to find out. Seven, eight, nine. Operating voltage for this thing is supposed to be nine volts. And it's kind of flashing. Now, I can't really show you what I'm trying to get it to flash to, but you notice it's kind of randomly flashing there. Up in the voltage made no difference, really. It's not any brighter. What I need is a slightly different input voltage. Slightly higher input voltage, and we'd have a better signal here. So I'm going to try to clean that up, too. Probably, <laughs> it's hooked up to my phone. So just in case you guys are wondering what's going on, I'm playing a song, and I'm getting this thing to flash to the song. It's not very reliable. It's kind of hokey right now because the connections are kind of not all the greatest in the world. But I did get it to work. And that's a start. And I know I didn't burn this thing out because it was designed for 9 volts. Yeah, I don't think I burned it out. We're going to find out in a second because I had it running at 6. And I cranked her up to 9 to check something. So, I better check. I might have burned something up. Now, I've got plenty of replacement parts, so that's not an issue. Alright, I'll be back. I'll let you know what's going on in a minute. 